The Absconders by Damon Pohl The old man spoke confidently, though his tone was dull, so uninspired. His descriptions were plain, ordinary. The kids sat in the front row, their full attention rapt. It was inconceivable that the old man had cracked it, down to the very letter. It was such an absurd premise. To even be here in this auditorium, across the stars from where the kid had been born, to listen to the old coot nail down every single piece of the time-honored puzzle, from the designs of the warp drive to the need for holographic suits, the presentation really was a wonder to behold, to see such feats displayed in two dimensions by the dim light of a projector. As the old man spoke, the kid began to survey the room to look for any other surprised onlooker. Drifting through the disinterested faces of the crowd, it was easy to ascertain they could only find one. An elderly woman near the east wing, the way she played with the wide rim of pearls around her neck, it was mesmerizing, but not quite right. The kids stood, shrouded by the darkness of the lecture hall, and shuffled their way out of the aisle. They retreated a ways up into the back sections of the room, part of them intending to walk out, to run away from this unreal showing, to find somewhere to hide. Instead, the kid found themselves sitting beside the old woman. You too, they asked politely. It seemed to calm her nerve. Never thought they'd get it right here, she responded automatically. Me neither. I thought I had more time. The old woman nodded. Well, can't stay for long now, the old woman said. They'll be coming soon. Her eyes blinked in an abnormal horizontal fashion. Quite soon, I reckon. The kid didn't need her to tell them that. The old woman drew two knitting needles out of her bag and began waving them in a circle. You best be leaving now, too, my sweet. The woman slid out of existence through the circle, leaving the kid sitting alone. No one in the lecture hall noticed. The old man didn't skip a beat in his long-winded explanation. Problem was, the kid didn't have an exit strategy planned. Thought one wouldn't be needed for years. They could have asked the old woman, but it wasn't right to be a burden. She couldn't be expected to carry them. This was the sort of thing you had to handle on your own. They were coming. Once you figured it out, they always did. They came because they had figured it out first and had become obsessed, protective. And so they had built a huge map, a web of activated systems. With each new addition, they will come forth once again to pass the torch in earnest to show you what it truly means to be connected to another world. And so that left people like the kid and the old woman, survivors, those who had fled their homes, equipped with the knowledge required to hop, bouncing through the battlegrounds, ash-covered husks that were once planets, until they found some backwoods dimension where they could lay low, live a life even, and begin to forget the horrors they had seen. It never lasted long, they were always close behind, nipping at the heels of the technologically endowed, eager to show the price of progress. The kids' feet slapped the wide steps of the lecture hall as they bounded towards the exit. Their speed drew glances, but it wouldn't matter for long. They burst through the door and out through the hallway connecting to the campus. Their means of hopping had unfortunately only worked once. It had admittedly been something of a fluke. This meant a novel solution was needed for each hop. It was less than ideal. This time, perhaps the simplest solution was best. It was risky, but there wasn't time for anything else. Only a short window to act. The kid rounded the corner into the staircase, turning a series of right angles as they scrambled up the steps. They clambered back through the door, onto the second-floor balcony of the lecture hall they had just left. As the old professor droned on, the kid could see it beginning to form behind him. They hurried past the empty seats of the balcony wing, closing the distance between them and the professor. They were several meters above the lectern now. As the portal began to tear through the space behind the professor, some of the students gasped. The old man himself never had time to turn around, to see the whole of their theory come to fruition. As the hordes of surreal-shaped creatures began to pour out of the spinning circle, the kid climbed onto the narrow railing and leapt forward. They soared through the air towards the rip in space. They just cleared the sluggish masses pouring into the lecture hall and connected with the mist of the spiral. 
The kid could taste blood as they gritted their teeth, head pounding from the impact. They could feel creatures nipping at their heels, arms reaching out to grasp them. When they awoke, the air was cool and crisp. Great lush vegetation hung overhead, shading the kid from a deep purple sun. They spent the day exploring the new land, and as far as they could tell, there was no trace of cities or organized societies. Finally, the kid thought, a place to relax. As they rested next to the dazzling waterfall, they almost thought they could hear the faint sound of giant thundering beasts in the distance. Such a paradise would present its own problems. <laughs> 